This is an adaptation of the sewing machine cover from my book, um, Love to Sew Sewing Room Accessories. As opposed to the one in the book, this one's actually got a hole in the top so that you can actually pull the handle of your sewing machine through the hole so you can carry it. And I'll show you in this video how you can measure to make sure that you've got exactly the right fitting bespoke cover for your sewing machine. Let's get sewing. This is Sewing Room Accessories. It's one of the Love to Sew range from Search Press, which means that you're going to get very simply explained projects. And in this book, you've got 15 projects, and I've based these all around things that you might like to make for your sewing room, things to make for yourself. Of course, you can give them as gifts if you wanted to, but I'm thinking of you. So everything from pin cushions to um, storage solutions, there's the machine cover, a couple of different types of machine covers in here. We've got tidy caddies and uh, rolls, machine mats. That's an interesting one. It's a seam press, which is a little bit like a tailor's ham, but you make it to the size that you want to. I make a lot of handbags, so I made one with a large square base, so I can just push it straight inside a bag and press it. Um, so machine covers, a pattern pouch. So again, all things for you to make for yourself. This is the, um, the cover that's from the book. It's more of a dust cover, this one, because it just goes over the top of your machine and ties at the side. On this one, I've used applique work and free motion embroidery to apply it with bias binding around the edge and ties with ribbon. It's as simple as that. But on the one I'm going to make for you today, because I wanted to make something a little bit different, we're going to make a hole in the top so that you can put the handle of the machine through the hole and carry it. And instead of the applique work, we're going to put a pocket straight across the front instead. So the first thing you need to do is to measure your sewing machine. And I'm literally going to go across the top of the machine from one side to the other Add a couple of inches on either side so that your cover drapes like so. Mine measures 30 inches. And then the width of your sewing machine, mine is 20 inches at its widest. That's going to be the size of the fabric that I need to cut. So I've cut two pieces, one for the front and one for the back. And with the outer piece, I've put some fusible fleece behind it. And that's given it a, a little bit of rigidity. So it doesn't stand up alone, but it feels nice and firm. Now I've got a, um, a directional fabric, which means that as the, uh, the pattern drapes over the top of the sewing machine, one side, well the back side, is going to be upside down. And I wanted to join two pieces together because it's more cost effective to use a couple of fat quarters than it would be to have the whole 30 inches off one roll of fabric because that means that you've got a lot on, on the end to spare. So what I've done is to join the two pieces together with the print facing each other. So as it drapes over the back, it sits the right way around as it does at the front. But I've joined it on the back of the cover rather than straight across the top. Because if I joined it centrally, that's where the hole's going to go for the handle and it'll be quite bulky to make the hole. So I've just dropped that down to the back. I've also done the same with my lining. And I am going to put a pocket across the front of this one. So, I've got another fat quarter of fabric. I've cut that to 12 inches deep. And basically that's going to fold in half and sit across the front of my cover like so. So we'll do this bit first of all. So I'm going to fold back in half, right sides together, and just sew along the long side to make a tube. So I'm just using a quarter of an inch seam allowance. It's, it's not really necessary or important to be a quarter of an inch. It's just what I'm used to working with. And I'm not pinning this. I don't, I don't find it necessary, really. Sometimes it's quicker not to pin than it is to just put all the pins in and take them out as you sew. So there's my tube. Let's turn this the right side out. And you could put a pocket on the back as well if you wish, so just repeat. Normally I would take this to the iron and give it a press. 
but I shan't because it's going to be quicker not to. So fold in half and I'm just twisting the seam so that it sits slightly inside the back so it's not right on the edge. I just find it easier to sew to keep things neat. And what I will do is a line of top stitching straight across the top. That helps the fabric to sit flat. It looks nice, it looks professional. And there we go. And snip. So we have this. Tom. Hello. Now, Bobbin, at the moment, just bear with me, is out in the garden eating a bone. So while the dog's away, the cats will come to play. And I might have told you about Tom before. He's a cat that adopted us. He's 14 years old, and the reason I know so much about him is because he, he just came to stay. Not like he's doing now. Where are you going? He came to stay one day. Um, he stayed for about a month, and considering we've got a dog and two cats, he made himself very much at home. Um, and I took him to the vets just to see if he was chipped, because I thought, he's such a lovely cat, somebody's going to be missing him. So it turns out he was chipped. And his owners, who are an elderly couple, and took you back in everybody, um, had moved house and they'd moved from Scotland to Lincolnshire, where we live, right into the next village. But um, the cat ran away from home and they were really worried about him because they thought he'd been run over. But when they came to see him, let me just, are you coming? Are you coming? Come on, come and say hello again. When they came to see him, they saw that he was so at home, they asked if he could stay. So we thought it's a nice resting home for the old boy to spend the rest of his years. We've had him since um, January now, and he's just fitting really well. Haven't you? You're a good boy. <laughs> right, you've said hello. Off you go. There you go. So that's three cats and a dog we've got now. OK, back to sewing. Um, so the pocket is going to sit across the front of my... Uh, cover and I'm just going to hold it in place with a few pins. If you wanted to measure and mark and just make sure that this is perfectly level then of course you can do. And I'll just hold that in place. This is really handy. It's um, a, a clover magnetic pin cushion. It just sits on your wrist. Really easy to use. Right. I'm also going to mark some lines and draw um, and make pockets. So it's not just going to be one big pocket, there's going to be uh, different pockets. And you can tailor make these. So if you wanted to make pen pockets, you could do lots of narrow dividing lines. If you wanted larger pockets, maybe to put patterns in, then you can measure your patterns and mark those. But I'm just going to put a couple of lines just kind of randomly. So I've divided almost into three, but they don't have to be perfect and exact. Then we'll sew straight across the bottom. going to tack down the sides as well. So this is just to hold the pockets in place before I put the, um, the bias binding on. Now my pocket was a little bit longer than the cover so I need to trim this down as well. So let's just turn that over and trim. Then we're sewing the dividing lines as well. So always sew a couple of stitches backwards before you go forwards, but that's particularly important at the top of the pockets, just in case you're going to put any strain on them. But show me if your stitches started to come undone after your project's finished. Whoops. Whoops. 
and we'll just sew down the second side here just to hold the edge of the pocket in place. And there we go, so let's cut this away. And take out the bins. Right. Now we're going to put the lining and the outside of the cover right sides together. It's quite a quick project this one because you don't have to put pockets or pockets, pockets or applique or anything on there. You could literally just sew the two pieces together. Oh no, not doing that yet. We're going to put the ribbon on first. So I'm going to take two pieces of ribbon about four pieces of ribbon, sorry, about 10 inches long. I've got a cat at my feet, I'm not concentrating. That's normally a dog, isn't it? So I'm just measuring one piece off against the second so that they're all just about the same length. These I'm going to sew facing inwards just at the top of the pocket because I think that would be a good place. So, oh I didn't tell you did I, my pocket at the bottom is four inches from the base, so six inches deep, so the ribbon is ten inches from the top, uh, sorry from the bottom, facing either side. And then the ribbon on the back of the cover needs to be in the same position when folded in half. So instead of measuring it, I'm just going to offer the back up against the front and pop the ribbon in the same place. And then I'll tack these down so I can take the pins out. So within the seam allowance again, tacking UK, basting US, same thing. And on the other side. Put the lining on the back, right sides together, make sure all of the ribbons pointing inwards and you're not crossing over the centre. You'll see why in a second. So that's the back of the lining. And line all of this up. Nice and square. Right, and then I'm going to hold all of the layers together with a few pins just around the centre point. Right, so tape measure back out again. And let's measure where the handle on the top of my machine goes. I'm going to measure from the bottom of where my um, cover sits up to the front of the handle, which is 15 inches, and then we'll make a mark. With the disappearing pen. There we go. So that's just underneath. I know I'm in the right area because that's where I, I could kind of feel the handle. Now sometimes your handle is going to be right in the centre of your machine, sometimes it could be slightly to one side or the other. 
So let's have a measure. My fabric was 20 inches wide and my handle is going to sit between 7 and 14 inches across. It's practically in the middle of my machine. So I want my handle to be 7 inches to 14 inches. Okay, so I can see the shape of a box coming on there already. I'll just re-measure the length of my handle, that's under 7 inches. So a 7 inch hole is going to fit my handle perfectly. And I'm just going to measure the depth of the hole that I need, which will be 1.5 inches. Now we need to measure accurately. So I'm just using a, um, a water erasable pencil to mark, but it really doesn't matter because this is going to be on the wrong side of your lining and you're going to sew over the top of these stitches as well. There we go. So I'm just going to fold this in half now. And I find that the hole is sitting practically on the top of the fold just here. It's actually slightly over to the back, but when I look at my sewing machine, that's the way that it sits on top of the sewing machine. So if your handle is slap bang in the centre of the top of your sewing machine, that is so easy because that's going to be the easiest way to mark it out. Right, now we've made the mark. We're not going to cut just yet. We're going to sew around the hole. Okay, so literally all the way around the box shape and keep this nice and flat and square when you get to the corner. Stop with the needle in the down position so you can pivot around nice and easily. Back down. Around again. If you don't fancy a go at making the handle like this, or making a hole for the handle, you could put a fabric handle on the top of your dust cover to lift it on and off. Obviously you won't be able to put your sewing machine up through it. There we go. And back down to the final side. And snip. Right. Now we can take the pins out and we can cut that hole. So we're going to cut into the centre, straight down the centre of the hole, just like we were putting a, a placket zip in, and into the corners. Don't cut through the stitches, because you can have to sew around again if you do, but cut as close to them as you can, into all four sides. Then we're going to turn the whole thing the right side out. So take your lining and push it all through the hole. And you can see by cutting right into those corners, you've got that nice neat turn there. So normally I would take this to the ironing board and press it. But just for now, I'm going to top stitch all the way around the hole. So I'm just going to make sure that the seam is sitting right on the edge and so about a quarter of an inch all the way around. Just 
just roll this out of the way a bit. And turn. And again, top stitching, just like with the pocket, it keeps the layers of fabric together. So it kind of stops the lining from poking out behind. But top stitching, I always say, and I say it a lot, but it always gives a really nice professional finish. You don't very often buy something from the stores um, that's sewn, whether it's a flap on a bag or a, um, a lapel on a jacket that doesn't have top stitching around it. So take your time with it if you're not too confident because we want some nice straight lines going on here. Just back to the beginning. And cut. And there we go. That's how we're looking now. It's quite smart, isn't it? All right, well, we have nearly finished. The final thing that we need to do is to apply bias binding all around the edge. So I'm making sure that all of my fabrics are lying flat. If you have some spray fabric adhesive, like your 505s, now would be a jolly good time to use it, just to hold those layers together. Again, with the ribbons facing inwards, we're going to put the bias binding all around the edge. Now, I'm a fan of hand sewing with bias binding, but this is quite a large product, so it's going to be quite time consuming. So, I'm going to do this all in one go. Right, I like to start somewhere inconspicuous, so probably at the bottom of the back. And I'm going to fold my bias binding in half. As you can see, this is port bias binding. And the finished binding measure three, quarter of a, three quarters of an inch wide. So usually with bias binding, you fold over the end, first of all. Because when you come back around, when you've been all the way around it, that's the overlap, so it looks neat. But it works the other way when you're doing it with this method. Because I'm going to wrap the bias binding straight around the edge of the fabric and sew through both layers at the same time. So now when I come back around, that's the bit that's going to overlap. Now, if you wanted to pin this um, or clip it, use your, your fabric clips, that would be an option. But just for speed's sake, I'm just going to hold the layers together as I'm sewing. If you wanted to press the bias binding in half, first of all, that could help to keep it in place. And I'm going to sew as close to the edge as I can but I'm really going to take it easy. You can't rush something like this because if you rush, you will end up with wobbly lines and you'll be unpicking. So I'm just making sure that I'm catching the bias binding on the back. You can't see that, can you? I'll show you in a minute. Um, and I've got both layers of fabric there. Right, I'm going to come out of here and stop, which I wouldn't normally do, but I want to show you how I'm going to make the bias, um, sorry, the mitre around the corner. So you can see on both sides, I've got a nice row of bias binding and it's stitched evenly. When I come to the corner here, let's see if I can show that a bit clearer. Fold into the corner, take the second side and fold it around so in the corner, you've actually got a diagonal line just there. Let me see if I can show that a little bit more clearly. So up to the edge, and again, your clips might come in handy here. Keep the edge of the bias tape, the centre of the bias tape, following the line of the edge of your fabric and fold it over. And when you squish that into the corner, it forms a diagonal line and a nice sharp point on both sides. And the bias binding is cut on the bias, so it's cut diagonally, so it stretches. But it's, it's very tempting sometimes if you haven't 
learn how to make a mitre corner is just stretch the bias binding around the edge and it, it doesn't normally sit very well when you do that. Again, we, we like a, a nice professional finish. So it, it's worth, you know, fiddling around with this and being careful. Again, stop with a needle down and carry on. And we shall carry on around all four sides. And I shall come back to you shortly when I've finished. Now I'm just coming up to where I've started. So I've sewn the bias binding all the way around. So I've stopped because I'm using my bias tape off the roll so I can cut the right length accurately. I've overlapped the ends of the bias binding just by about half an inch. And then I'm going to fold the end over when I come to it. Almost there. So just fold over the end of the bias tape to make it neat. I hope you can see what I'm doing down there. And wrap that over the bias binding where I started. Line it up to make neat. And we are almost finished. Okay. Try it on for size. So my thread goes out of the way on this particular machine. My cover goes over the top like so. Handle fits through the hole in the center. This ties at the side. Oops, just switch the machine off first. There. and I have my perfectly fitting sewing machine dust cover with the handle that I can pull through when I'm carrying it. That flattens down if I don't need to. With my pocket at the front that I can keep my bits and bobs in. And I have to say, I think I have one very well-dressed sewing machine.